Hello, and welcome to The Bard's Truth with your host, The Green Bard. This is episode 7.5, King's Blood 8, Hidden Dragon Seeds. I recently mentioned in a Twitter post on A Song of Mantis that I was voting for Gilly on account of her hidden dragon blood. I got some feedback from Liz Dated that uh, she had never heard of that idea, asking if I have a video on the theory. Well, no, I didn't. But I will now, though. <laughs> While George R. R. Martin gives us details about certain families and bastards in Westeros and Essos that have king's blood, such as Brown Bed Plum, the Martells, the Baratheons, House Longwaters, etc., there are likely also many hidden dragon seeds spread around Westeros. Aside from Jon Snow, who I'll leave off this list with the general acceptance of R plus L equals J, I don't pretend to know for sure who any of the others are, but I do have a few educated guesses. I have no doubt that I am only scratching the surface with my presentation here. There are many more. Tinfoil this all is, though, um, but it's fun, unserious tinfoil, so let's enjoy it. I'm sure uh, I learned many of these ideas from others, so I must give shout-outs to many of my forum and YouTube tinfoil buddies, including Roinfart, Illyrio Mopartis, user M. Toodles, The Great Busey, Sir Richard of House York, Ashara's trueborn son, I'm sure I got that wrong, Sir Stefan of the Septa Shana Secrets YouTube channel, Old New Dude, and many more. Uh, note that I don't subscribe to all these folks' ideas, but I do respect their work and their ideas. I'm kind of a let's, let's share, let's think type of a guy. Okay, without further ado, here's the list with some analysis to follow. Number one, Craster and all his sons and daughters, including Gilly and her son, notably. Two, Tyrion Lannister and his progeny, likely Lana of the Happy Port in Braavos. <laughs> Jamie Lannister, too, perhaps. And Cersei and her children, Joffrey, Marcella, and Tommen. Number five, Sir Duncan the Tall and his progeny, most importantly, Brienne, the Clegane brothers, and Hodor. Darkstar and perhaps other members of House Dane. Number seven, Nettles. Yes, Preston Jacobs is wrong about her, or at least half wrong, as much as I respect his work. Number eight, Sarah, erstwhile courtesan and deceased wife of Illyrio Mopatis and her son Aegon. Alicent Hightower, her line, of course, ended in The Dance of the Dragons in its aftermath. And then number 10, members of House Uller, including Alaria Sand and her four youngest sand snakes, Aelia, Obella, Dorea, and Loreza, all potentially getting a dragon gene from both their mother and their father, Oberyn Martell. There is not time or really enough evidence on each of these to go into detail, but I'm going to give you a little bit on each of them and why I think that they may be hidden dragon seeds. Craster and his children, including Gilly and her son, number one. His father was a crow who stole a woman out of White Tree Village, but after he had her, he flew back to his wall. She went to Castle Black once to show the crow his son, but the brothers blew their horns and run her off. That's from Egret in A Storm of Swords, John 2. The idea here is that Bloodraven is Craster's father, some have also suggested that Maester Aemon was his father instead. I favor Bloodraven because I don't see any opportunity that Aemon might have had to steal Craster's mother. The evidence is scant for the Bloodraven idea, though. You'd think if it were true, some of Craster's children might have albino genes or Targaryen colored hair, but perhaps the woman from White Tree had that strong black hair gene, and um, on average, Craster's children would have 75% of her genes and 25% of Craster's father's genes. So perhaps um, the albino gene and silver hair genes were bred out in the early generations. There are other details that favor this parentage too. First, the fact that the others seem to want the son's genetic material for its king's blood. Secondly, with Craster understood to be above 50, this would definitely coincide with the timeline for Bloodraven being the Lord Commander or a High Ranger in the Watch. This gives him the power and opportunity to seemingly run her off from the wall while secretly setting them up with a keep that was friendly to the watch. I also like the idea that John's baby swap is futile, that Gilly's and Craster's son 
have just as much king's blood or more than Mansa's child. Uh, the sad part, of course, for this is that Melisandre would probably catch on to this. I worry that Mel then might sacrifice this child, perhaps even to resurrect John's body. Number two, Tyrion and his progeny, likely Lana. I first heard this idea from Preston Jacobs, at least the Tyrion chimera side of it, and I've discussed it in this video here. But Sir Stefan of Septuagina's Secrets does a great job of talking about all aspects of the Tyrion chimera theory. I created a playlist for those videos. I'll give a link to it. I also want to mention the analysis that user M. Toodles has on the symbolism we have for Tyrion. The whole Lana thing is my idea. I'm sure others have had it as well. And it's supported by simple uh, evidence. Her name being the same as a child, which Cersei begrudgingly agrees to be named in Tywin's honor in A Feast for Crows. And there's also an ir irony in the idea that Taisha would end up at the happy port, wherever whores go. Numbers three and four, Jamie and Cersei and their children. I won't present a lot of evidence here, but I will point to a video by Sir Richard of House York on the Ashara's Trueborn Son YouTube channel, which does as convincing a job as I've seen of making this case. We do know for sure that Ares had a thing for Joanna, and she was dismissed as a lady-in-waiting to Queen Rhaella under very sub suspicious circumstances, so I definitely give some credence to this idea. Also, Joffrey is compared to Eris a lot. Number five, Sir Duncan the Tall in his progeny, notably Brienne, Sandor, the Mountain, and Hodor. I wish I could take credit for this idea, but honestly, I forgot who told me about it in the first place. The evidence, though, is simple. Duncan is a fatherless child from King's Landing with blonde hair. It's certainly possible that he is the son of Aegon the Unworthy or Aegon the Dragon Knight, or some other Targaryen of note, perhaps even Makar, which ironically would make him Egg's brother. <laughs> the uh, Makar slash brother thing is my own idea. I'm not sure if anybody else has uh, said that before. Number six, Darkstar and other members of House Dane. Several ideas about Darkstar have bounced around the fandom, and uh, the two I like the best are as follows. First, Magor, the son of Arian Brightflame, the older brother of Egg, was quickly married off into House Dane, probably by Egg's mother, Diana Dane, at the crowning of Egg when Magor was passed over. Or the second is the Dark Star is the secret bastard of King Aerys. I favor the first, which would apply to many members of House Dane having uh, dragon blood, while the latter applies only to Dark Star. Number seven, Nettles. Preston Jacobs claims that Nettles doesn't have the dragon gene. She only tamed Sheepstealer by feeding it. I disagree. I think the reason that she needed to tame Sheepstealer is not because she didn't have the dragon gene, but because Sheepstealer is a wild dragon. You would still need to have the dragon gene to bond with Sheepstealer, or any dragon, and ride it. Nettles was the only one to ever ride a wild dragon, though. The rest of the dragons we see ridden in the entire lore are Valyrian dragons or Targaryen dragons bred in captivity. Nettles just used her brains to somewhat tame the wild beast the same way that many have done so throughout history, by appealing to their stomachs. Regardless, she is 100% a dragon seed, no question. Number 8. Sarah, wife of Illyrio Mopatis, and her son Aegon. Many of the fandoms say that Aegon is not Rhaegar's son, but a Blackfire through the female line. While I agree with this, I also think he is the son of Illyrio Mopatis and Sarah. I think Sarah, spelled S-E-R-R-A, is named by our author for her great, 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 etc. grandmother, Sarah Targaryen, spelled S-A-E-R-A. -E daughter of Jaehaerys, though he was a terrible father, and good queen Alysanne, who we all love. So Aegon has both Blackfire and Sarah Targaryen's genes. I think this because we just get too much of her backstory, Sarah's, in Fire and Blood for her bloodline not to have survived and be relevant. I also will mention for those who think Aegon is a trueborn Targaryen that Sir Richard of House York, Ashura's trueborn son, has an interesting video series where he argues that Aegon is actually the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. I'm not well-versed in this theory, but it's worth a listen. I'll give a link to it. Number nine, Alicent Hightower of the extinct 
Hightower Targaryen line. Speaking of Sarah Targaryen, I believe Alicent to be the daughter of Sarah Targaryen and Otto Hightower, conceived and born during her time serving the faith in Old Town, before she fled to Essos, to be in a pleasure house, right? Why did she flee? I hypothesize it was because she was used as a broodmare by the Hightowers to steal her genes, only to then have her daughter stolen from her subsequently. My evidence? From the Rogue Prince. As the king's strength and wits began to fail, he was oft confined to bed. Sir Otto's 15-year-old daughter, Alicent, became his constant companion, fetching his grace his meals, reading to him, helping him to bathe and dress himself. The old king sometimes mistook her for one of his daughters, calling her by their names. Near the end, he grew certain that she was his daughter, Sarah, returned to him from beyond the narrow sea. She looked like Sarah because perhaps she was of Sarah's body. At least that's my idea. The timing also does seem to line up. Number 10, House Uller. Recall that Alaria Sand is the bastard of the Hellholt, so her four daughters with Ober and Martell would potentially be getting the dragon gene from both sides of their family. This one takes a quote to make the connection. Whether Rhaenys Targaryen outlived her dragon remains a matter of dispute. Some say that she lost her seat and fell to her death. Others that she was crushed beneath Meraxes in the castle yard. A few accounts claim the queen survived her dragon's fall, only to die a slow death by torment in the dungeons of the Ullers. The true circumstances of her demise will likely never be known, but the histories record that Rhaenys Targaryen, sister and wife to King Aegon I, perished at the Hellholt in Dorne in the tenth year after the conquest. That's from the World of Ice and Fire, Dorne, Dorne Against the Dragons. My theory is that Rhaenys did in fact survive and was nursed back to health by the others. Eventually, in some Stockholm Syndrome-esque manner, she went on to bear the child of an Uller, and that child lived past Aegon's Dornish Wars. I assume that Aegon inadvertently killed Rhaenys during one of his later campaigns against the Hellhold, and that fact was what the letter the Martell heir later showed Aegon which caused him to then abandon his war for the conquest of Dorne. With that, I'm done. I hope you all enjoyed this little uh, indulgence of tinfoil. Good luck on the path. Thanks to all the terrific artists whose work is featured on this video. Thanks especially to those in my family who helped in this series so far. If you enjoy this content, you can also consider supporting us on Patreon.